beating your head against the wall trying to get your doctors to write war and peace length notes for you? Maybe you don't need to. Give me the next four minutes to show you something different enough to matter and standard enough to be doable. How important is physician documentation? The Dear Physician letter implies that it's the only thing that matters. The LCDs and MLN Matters publications state that both are important and further state that the doctor's notes don't have to have everything about the patient in them. What's the position of the largest P&O clinic chain in the country? I'll quote from their website, hangercom slash rack. Physician's notes are not required. What is required is documentation in the medical record, which includes your clinic notes. So which is it? Are doctor's notes the most important thing or not important at all? The answer is somewhere in between. We know from the last code video, the state of P&O documentation, that Medicare tracks what you do. More claim errors equal a higher risk score, and that means more scrutiny, more denials, and more audits for your business. But if you track patient progress, use the right words in your documentation, and follow the LCD, the Medicare computer algorithm gets the information it wants. You start to avoid complex reviews, your error rate decreases, your risk score goes down, and your documentation is now sufficient. They don't need to rely on the doctor's documentation as much because yours is complete and you're considered a low-risk supplier. Fewer CMS hassles means more time for you to spend on the more complex patients that you see. The start of pay for performance is doctors and hospitals being paid a bonus for improving patient outcomes, as in Voluntary Accountable Care Organizations, or ACOs. CMS gives doctors and hospitals in these accountable care organizations guidelines on how to treat patients to maximize care and minimize cost. CMS focuses on diagnoses that save the most money when they're under control. Falls, body mass index, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes are the ones we can improve with our P&O care. Medicare wants to pay for care that improves outcomes in these high-risk groups. For body mass index, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes, the CMS treatment guidelines for doctors and hospitals state that an increase in physical activity will improve patient outcomes, and those treatments are the ones Medicare wants to pay for. For falls, CMS treatment guidelines state that increased gait and increased balance are ways to improve outcomes for folks in that risk category. So when you chart exactly how your prosthesis or orthosis will increase the activity level for your diabetic patient, say, your notes are corroborating their physician's notes, which state, patient was educated on ways to control diabetes and encouraged to increase their activity level. Be sure to check out the code documentation guideline for integrating high-risk patient group information into your chart notes. It's a small change that could have a big impact. Do you have a problem you need help with billing and documentation-wise? Do you have an idea for a topic for one of our videos? Please then email us at code at spsco.com. Thanks.